it's what mojo wolf first of all i'd like to welcome you back to my history with the sony playstation consoles in the first part of this two-part series i covered my history with the first two consoles the playstation 1 and 2 if you'd like to see that please go check that first part out on the youtube channel continuing where we left off it was december of 2008 at this time my mom and i loved watching movies together and we wanted to be spoiled by the best experience we could have at the house. You probably won't get my mom to admit it, but she's very tech savvy. Yeah, she might not know what to do when the Wi-Fi network quits connecting and it has green lights. And she might not know what to do when the printer doesn't want to do its job, you know, printing through Wi-Fi or something like that. So what near do I most of the time? She could do things like play games on the computer and GameCube, find the best deals on eBay chat connect with their friends all across the world on the internet and she had a good ex understanding of why it was always wise to do some research on the technology you're wanting to buy one example that comes to mind is that she wanted a surround sound system for music and movies she loved both of them so she'd take me along and we'd go to all these stores and see what they had more often than not sony always had the best in terms of what was available unfortunately it usually carried a high price tag but you know unlike most of the things you could buy the Sony devices would last. After the sound system, she got her first high-definition TV, which was a Sony Bravia, if I remember right. We would eventually pick up this new service called Netflix and watch movies on this new television and have the house shaken during action scenes from the sound system. Like, it would be shaken like this. And I'm, I'm kind of shaking the webcam there. And um, it was a blast. That's probably why my mom and myself are quite deaf. Anyway, though, there's a reason I'm painting this picture for you guys. We decided to check out this thing called a Blu-ray player. Blu-ray was like the high-definition version of the DVD. Mom was interested in getting a Blu-ray player, and at the same time, I was interested in getting a new gaming console for Christmas. Xbox was the first choice, but I decided to do some reading on the PlayStation 3 and noticed that, you know, this thing could also function as a Blu-ray player and a game console. Plus it had an HDMI connection which was a new thing back in 2008. So we went and looked at the pricing of everything and quickly noticed that the PlayStation 3 didn't cost much more than a Blu-ray player. About like how the PS2 was roughly the same as a DVD player back around 1999-2000 time frame. So mom made a deal with me that she'd get a PlayStation 3 instead of just a Blu-ray player but we'd have to share it and you know that's fine with me of course. So my plan was to just go play on the PC when it was time for movies, but honestly, most of the time, I ended up watching the movies with her because the PlayStation controller was something Mom was just not interested in learning how to use at the time, so I'd have to go in there and kind of show her how to get the movie started, get the movie started, pause it, and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, with that background story in mind, let's get to the PlayStation 3 itself. When we got the PS3, it was the original Fatboy version. In fact, I still have it as I make this video. It works just fine, similar to my PlayStation 2. At the time, much like it is today, the only way you could really get your hands on a PlayStation was buying a bundle during the holiday season. In fact, this PlayStation came from a bundle sold by Walmart. I remember it quite well. The bundle allowed you to pick two PS3 games of your choosing to start out, and it also included a second controller made by like a third party company. It is nice having that second controller when I had to charge the default PS3 controller. I always liked having proprietary Sony controllers, but the third party controller was usually fine for backups sake. These days you can really vary on terms of quality with your uh, second hand controllers, especially with the Switch stuff, but back then, you know, a Mad Cat controller was just as fine as a Sony one, and it was about $20, $25 cheaper as well. Um, now, the two games I chose to go with the PS3 were Madden and FL09, with mine and John Madden's favorite player, Brett Favre, on the cover. The second game was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. You guys remember that classic? Much of my first year of PlayStation 3 gaming included those two games in heavy rotation. You know, over the years, I, of course, would add extra games to my library. So I'm going to sit here and reminisce about those games for just a few moments real quick. I remember picking up Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion for quite cheap, and I played throughout that whole campaign. I would always play the game at my friends' houses on the Xbox 360 in the past. 
to me, that was the first game that truly felt next generation. I was totally immersed in that world. Shortly after, there's another thing, another game coming out, and it had similar vibes to Elder Scrolls. I remember craving the next medieval fantasy game, and it came in the form of Demon Souls. Little did I know what I was getting into at the time. I got it at GameStop shortly after it released, and I played it quite a bit. Unfortunately, the Souls gameplay was it just didn't click with me, and I was a bit of a snowflake when it came to difficult games. No kidding there. Combine those ingredients together, and you get me going to GameStop when Fallout New Vegas released, and trading in Demon Souls for Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas was a bit more of what I was looking for in terms of a role-playing game that you could get lost in the world exploring and doing quests for people. I rather enjoyed this game because you could tell it was a Bethesda game at its core, but it's nice adjusting using guns instead of swords and exploring a post-apocalyptic Mojave Desert instead of a high-fantasy continent. During this generation, I loved my sports games. I got Madden almost, if not every single year, as well as college football games. I would play the NASCAR games and anything else sports related. I remember playing a few FIFA games. Of all these games, I remember buying NBA 2K11 with some money I made at my first job, and again, that game felt like another leap forward with the graphics, the performance, presentation, the whole nine yards. To me, it was a real basketball experience, and it was a blast playing that game, especially using the classic teams from different eras and pitting them against each other. During this time, I also played all the rhythm games that I could. I had every single rock band and guitar hero game you could think of, and I spent many, many nights playing some good music from a virtual audience. Lastly, I remember trying a game called Grand Theft Auto 4. This was my first game that Rockstar made, and it was a quite remarkable experience. The story, I think, was just as good as its sequel game, which is Grand Theft Auto 5, of course. And the bonus content you get with the game included two full expansions with sub-stories of their own. We didn't even get that at Grand Theft Auto 5. It was a great time to play on the PlayStation 3, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Oddly enough, I didn't play much of the new games being made for PlayStation only. I was so absorbed in the sports games, music games, RPGs, I just didn't get to check out games like Uncharted, The Last of Us, God of War, and many others. Don't worry though, I did get to experience these games later on. In early 2013, Sony and Microsoft gave the gamers a taste of the next generation of gaming with their announcement of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. During this time, Sony was picking up steam from the late success of the PlayStation 3, and Xbox was starting to fizzle out after a long reign with the Xbox 360. Microsoft made some controversial decisions with the Xbox One, including pricing it $100 more than the PS4 because it had the Kinect. Then around this time, people did not like the technology constantly listening to them, which the Kinect has to do in order to anticipate Xbox commands. Because remember, you could say, Xbox on, and it would turn the TV on, you know? So it had to constantly be listening for that. You know, you got to remember, people wanted a simple gaming machine focused on console gaming with the controller. They didn't want the gimmicks like the Wii nor the Kinect. I remember being one of those gamers. So I was passionate about that paragraph right there. Due to many of those factors, many gamers, including myself, decided the PlayStation 4 was the way to go. It looked better, plus their new controller was a little bit more innovative than Xbox sticking with the same formula. Not to mention, Sony was coming from behind and wanted to be a company for the gamers, sacrificing some profit to cater to the fans. Microsoft wanted the money at that time, and in turn, I think it humbled them and made them kind of become the sleeping giant they are now. Now, I remember working this summer at my local high school and saving my money up for the PS4. Fun fact, Neil's comics and video games worked with me during that time. He wouldn't tell you this, but he was an Xbox guy back then. I pre-ordered my PS4 on Amazon with release date delivery. Ordered it around July, with, and I think the release date was like November, early November of 2013. You have to remember it was an exciting time because we just got done playing Epic Games like Skyrim, couple years before and we had these we knew these new consoles could open many more doors it's like okay what's the next skyrim going to be like i remember getting the watchdogs bundle specifically essentially it was the ps4 with a copy of watchdogs in between the end of summer and the release date watchdogs got delayed to the next year amazon let me swap that game out with the game of my choosing and i remember picking call of duty ghosts and by the time it uh the console released i also had the latest copy of madden and then shortly after, I got a copy of NBA 2K14. 
Much like the launch of the PlayStation 3, these games carried me for quite a while. Also, during this time, I was subscribed to Gamefly. Mom got it as some odd promotion paired with National Geographic, so I got to use Gamefly and try various games out. After I'd finish a game, I'd get another on the list. You gotta remember, back then, it was easier to pay, like, 10 bucks a month for a disc versus going to the store and paying 60 every, like, two months, you know? So, anyway, some of the games... I got off of Gamefly included Infamous Second Son. I really enjoyed that game. It was one of the PlayStation exclusives. I think it was the first game that showed what the PS4 could do graphically and performance wise. After that game I tried Knack which was a charming and fun game. It had the feel of classic um, gosh, platformers we got to experience during the PlayStation 1 and 2 days. Then I played Tomb Raider. Such a fun game. I remember the game visually impressing me. I was telling friends how I liked the exploring and combat, and I had a friend recommend to me that I finally check out Uncharted. Um, the last game I got on Gamefly before a promotion ended and the price increase was The Witcher 3. I played it for about a week and couldn't defeat this werewolf early on in the game, so I essentially rage quit by putting the game back in the envelope and sending it right back in the mail. Another game series I enjoyed on PS4 was Uncharted. I played all four games and enjoyed each of them immensely. It was a lot like Tomb Raider and Indiana Jones to me. Not to mention they did a great job with the characters and the story, plus the action had you glued and ready to play for more. Um, it felt like each Uncharted game topped itself and got better all the way up to the fourth game, which was itself a satisfying end to the whole saga. I remember in 2015, Miss Mojo and I went with my mom and Stacy that you see on the channel from time to time. And we watched the seventh Star Wars movie. It just came out. You know how they had those advertisements before the movies? Well, they showed game trailers for new, two new games called Fallout 4 and Star Wars Battlefront. I was thankful to have all of them give me those two games for Christmas. I spent a lot of 2016 playing both of those games. Later on, I'd play games like MLB The Show as well as Call of Duty World War II. There were quite a few games my wife and I would play together on the PS4, and... To me, I'll always cherish those moments, especially. Because, you know, she's not much of a gamer, but if he can find a good game, she will play it. We both played through the entire game of Diablo 3 together, and then we both played all the way through Stardew Valley. There were other games, I believe, but those two, to me, stand out. We played a lot, we spent a lot of time on those two. Lastly, I remember trying a game called Spider Man. Let me tell you firsthand, it was so fun swinging around New York City as Spidey and taking care of business. Combat was real fluid, and it was as difficult as you wanted it to be, if that makes sense. Admittedly, I do struggle at times getting into the Batman Arkham games because the Spider-Man game, to me, is the pinnacle of those kind of superhero-type games. It's a shame I played that before the Batman Arkham series. In 2020, during this thing called the coronavirus pandemic, I sold my PlayStation 4 for quite a bit of money and use that money to finance my pre-order for the Xbox Series X. I don't exactly regret that decision per se, but still, it would have been nice to try games like God of War from 2017, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, I think was the first one, Bloodborne, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, just to name a few. I had to make a choice, and you know, I understood what I was passing up for a few years. But regardless, the PlayStation 4 was one of my favorite consoles. It never failed me and it ran great and even sounded like a jet engine <laughs> when the graphics put it to the test. Uh, me if you know what I'm talking about there. Like Super Russ, when he was streaming his Assassin's Creed games, Neil, myself, and Brian LCS, we get on there and say, you know, Russ, that sounds like the PS4, doesn't it? He's like, oh yeah, that's the jet engine. <laughs> I remember that. Um... I, I suppose I'll wrap up this history of PlayStation by talking about the two latest pieces of technology by Sony. Um, I don't have either of these, just as a disclaimer. But um, first we have the PlayStation VR 2. I bet it's going to be a cool virtual reality experience. Um, it was supposed to come out earlier this year, but or um, actually later on this year, but it got postponed to next year, much like many other games and devices. But, um, you know, I bet it'll be real cool, but one time I tried playing a game with the Oculus Rift, the Meta Rift, the Facebook Rift, whatever the hell you want to call it these days, and it made me sick from the motions. 
VR isn't really for me, but I bet it'd be cool. Secondly, we have the PlayStation 5. I'm curious to see how this console does in the long term and how Sony will behave toward the consumer. It's no doubt Xbox is picking up steam and it's looking like 2023 will be a great year to have the Xbox Series S or X. Sony's already tried to take a few notes from Microsoft by coming up with their own version of Game Pass called PlayStation Plus, Extra, Premium, Essential, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know to be honest. I checked out the list of games on that platform while writing this, and I'll admit, it seems like a, seems like a deal. I mean, instead of spending $70 on each game with the new generation, just have PS Plus and try them out. Like, it has Returnal, Demon Souls, um, Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding. Like, those are all $70 games. For like 15 bucks, you get to try all of them out for one month and just kind of see which one you like and just kind of stick with it. It's not going to take you three months to beat those games. Um, I hope both Sony and Microsoft have a great generation. I'm not a console war person. I love all three consoles for different reasons. My only worry is that Sony gets a bit greedy and arrogant like Microsoft did near the end of the 360 days. And they make decisions that kind of irk the consumer while the competition gets stronger. Microsoft's not their competitor. It's Google and Amazon and Meta with their shitty platforms. There's no better way to say it trying to enter the gaming space. Just stay out. Nobody wants you guys. Nevertheless, I think Sony has done a great job as a gaming company over the years. And I fully expect that momentum to continue because their games will be great no matter what, even if they ruffle some feathers by increasing the price of PS5 and things like that in some regions. I just want to thank you all for enjoying and encouraging this ongoing series. In the future, I'll discuss my history of the various PC games each piece will be about one game, so I'll see you then. Bot Mojo Wolf signing.